Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, grateful for the privilege of serving others in your name. As we continue to pause and seek guidance from you, we ask you to bless the leaders in this room today. For each of us carry a heavy responsibility of leadership and know that with wisdom from you, we make our timely decisions. Lord, your word says in Proverbs 11, 14, for the lack of guidance of defiles falls a nation, but victory is won with many advisors. And Father, right now I ask you to bless these advisors, these leaders in this room, and continue to continue to allow them to grow in their leadership. May we also seek the act of compassion in a world where so much is going on. May our leaders be hum humble in their actions and decisions and love those that they serve. And Father, as we strengthen to uh, strengthen ourselves as a leader, we continue to build communities in the area that allow and reflect your morals and your standings for, the, for our people. And always remind us that leadership is not about power, but about service. It's about service to those who don't have a voice, service to those who just want to be loved. And serving a Christ allows us to show that love. For in Colossians 4, 5, it says, be wise in the way you act toward others and make the most of every opportunity. So right now, Lord, I charge all leaders in this room, whatever position you may be in, your gift is needed in this world today. And above all, may our leadership reflect your grace that you have bestowed upon, bestowed upon us, the local area, and the United States of America. May we ask these things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. If my people who are called my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayers offered in this place. So it's, it's really a pleasure to be with all of you this morning, this beautiful fall morning. And I was so pleased to read the, the theme of this morning's prayer, Breakfast, Make Your Voice Heard in Heaven. And I'm looking forward very much to your message, Chaplain Black. Reading that theme, obviously it's talking about communicating with God and our prayers being heard in heaven. It also made me think of the, the words from Ecclesiastes 3, where it says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. He's also set eternity in the human heart. He set eternity in the human heart, into our hearts. And I think it's so crucial that we think more of those things that are eternal, that are intangible, that are heavenly. It's, it's so easy to get caught up in the challenges, our problems of our work, our daily life. So that's why we're here today, this morning, to turn our hearts to what is eternal. And I'll be reading a New Testament passage from 1 Timothy. And as I read it, it's worth noting that Paul uses the words, first of all, referring to prayer. He's urging us that prayer is of utmost importance. It's first of all. He even talks about four different ways of, of communicating with God through petitions, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving, and that it is for all people, all people. So our prayers are for this whole world, and we all watch the news, read the news. We know how crucial prayer is for our world today, that we may live in peace, you know, the peace that God gives that passes all understanding. But Paul specifically mentions those in authority so we are particularly lifting up to God, those of you representing us in our government. And again, we thank you for your service. So let's read from 1 Timothy 2. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful, and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And that passage describes beautifully why we are gathered here today. And I just love how it ends, that he wants all people to be saved 
and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So let's not forget that Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. So thank you. So before I, we bow our head for this prayer, I just want to take a moment. You know, for the last 10 years, this prayer breakfast has been going on, and there are two pivotal people in terms of this, that this is their last year. Dot, we want to thank you for your service in connection with this. As well as Larry. So thank you so much. It was really an honor to be asked to pray for our leaders. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned earlier is the leaders that we're praying for today aren't just the people up here on the dais, they're all of you, people in our communities. We all try to lead uh, to make sure that our communities are better and that our citizens are better served. So I'm gonna just bow my head at this point. Dear Lord, please help our leaders to understand that they're not alone, that while leadership Maybe a heavy responsibility it does not have to be a heavy burden. It's important that we utilize the things in our lives, the people in our lives, to communicate with each other in order to communicate with you to go down the right path. It's important that we take care of and surround ourselves with people who are going to be supportive, people who are going to put us in positions to be successful, People that are going to love us enough and care for us enough to tell us the truth, even if they don't agree with us. It's important for our leaders, and we pray that they set up places that will put themselves in jeopardy or in trouble or temptation to recognize that we are all human and fallible and that it's important in order to maintain our integrity to stay out of places that will tempt us. That's the first step in ensuring that we do not succumb to the temptations around us. And finally, we want to surround ourselves with things, things that are positive in our lives, things that are going to be, make us productive. It's uh, extremely critical uh, that we understand and appreciate, especially in today's age, and we pray that our leaders understand and embrace that civility is not weakness. We thank you for all of your blessings, and we pray for our leaders to continue. Thank you so much. Now we will hear from our keynote speaker, Barry Black, who is currently serving as the 62nd chaplain of the United States Senate. We are so very blessed and honored to have Chaplain Black with us this morning. Please watch this video prepared for us by Jesse Barringer of Grace Community Church. Jesse's intro video introduces Chairman Bla Chaplain Black better than any words could. Retired Rear Admiral Barry Black came from very humble roots in the projects of Baltimore, Maryland, raised with seven siblings by his loving, devout, and determined mom, along with the support of a faithful church community, Chaplain Black thrived. His youth and upbringing are chronicled in his autobiography, From the Hood to the Hill, the encouragement and support of his mother and his church family, his faith in God, his passion for learning, his diligence and hard work, all contributed to Chaplain Black's success during his years at Oakwood College, Andrews Theological Seminary, and other educational institutions. These years were highlighted not only with master's degrees and doctorates, but also numerous well-earned accolades and awards. After marrying Brenda Pearsall in 1973, Chaplain Black was commissioned as a Navy chaplain in 1976 and quickly realized that he had found his calling. During these years, him and his wife were blessed with three sons. He went on to receive multiple commands recommendations, awards, and recognitions for his distinguished work across 27 years of service in the Navy. Chaplain Black has written six books and has been called upon to speak at many faith events by multiple organizations. And in 2003, he was appointed the 62nd Chaplain of the United States Senate. Since then, he has spent the last 21 years opening the Senate in daily prayer as per tradition since 1789. In addition, Chaplain Black leads Senate Bible studies and also mentors and provides counseling and spiritual care for senators, their staff, and families. He has also served as the keynote speaker at two national prayer breakfasts in 2017 and 2024. Chaplain Black encourages the members of the Senate and all of us to make our voices heard in heaven. Please welcome Chaplain Barry Black.
We are so honored indeed. I wish my wife had seen what you just uh, put up on the screen. That's very, very impressive. Praise God. I am here today not because I am the chaplain of the United States Senate. I am here because Doc Magno pursued me like Lieutenant Gerard pursued Richard Kimball. I have never seen anything like it. And what an amazing spiritual shock we got from that uh, all my life you have been faithful oh, if anyone has any perturbations about what is going on in our nation and world that song should rejuvenate you and know that the sovereign God of the universe is not seated on his throne, wringing his hands and saying, what we gonna do, what we gonna do? That we have, as Luke Skywalker had to learn, we have a force. Mm -hmm. We have a force that is greater than anything that Yoda can teach you, okay? And that is the force of the third person of the Godhead living inside of us. First Corinthians 6, 19 says, Know ye not that your body is what? Okay, biblical literacy here. I love that. Okay. All right, all right. I know. I, I, I know where the boundaries are now, okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. And you are not your own, for you are purchased with an incalculable price. One of the life-changing epiphanies for me came as a 10 year old lad. My mother gave my siblings and me five cents for each Bible verse we memorized. She eventually put me on a flat rate, but that uh, was initially five, five. And, and I came across 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. We are redeemed not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And this inner city 10-year-old lad did some deductive reasoning. I didn't know that's what they called it as I did it, but I made the calculation that the value of something Thing is based upon the price someone is willing to pay. And when I learned that God sent his son, that was enough to fill my self-esteem pool so that no one could make me ever again feel inferior. Oh, what a blessing we have when we have a God who pursued us while we were sinners. He died for us. We can have access to that God any hour, any minute, any second of the day because we can make our voices heard in heaven. And I brought a little book by that very title that has 15 strategies for making your voice heard in heaven, and I'm just going to give you one of them. 
today, and that is the strategy of praying the model prayer. Now, there are other strategies, but praying the model prayer is the best way. You can pray with assistance. You can pray with purity. Sin blocks prayer. You can pray fearlessly. There is a courage that God gives us to pray. You can pray when you don't feel like being good. Mm. And other, but praying the model prayer. I wanna, I wanna teach us today how to make our voices heard in heaven by using the force of more effective prayer. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning with verse 1, the Bible says, once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. This was one of the only things the disciples ever asked Jesus to teach them. Jesus of Nazareth, I believe, is one of the most consequential people who ever lived. Someone said all of the armies that have ever marched, all of the navies that have ever sailed, all of the parliaments that have ever sat, all of the kings and queens that have ever reigned had not made the impact upon humankind as has that one solitary life. And yet, his disciples never asked him, teach us how to exorcise demons. Mark chapter 3 says he gave them delegated authority. Or they, they could just do that. In fact, they came back on one of their missionary journeys in Luke chapter 10, high-fiving one another and saying, Jesus, we're bad, we're bad. That's, that's what it says in the Greek. He said, even demons are subject unto us in your name. And, and, and Jesus said, you're getting excited about that? He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. D don't be surprised that when you say my name, demons tremble. When you, 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 you've taken the whipping that Lucifer took as he morphed into Satan. You remember stuff like that, okay? Jesus said, marvel instead that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So they never asked him how to do certain things, walk on water, feed the multitude. They saw a causal connection between his prayer life and his power. And they said, teach us how to do that thing you do before you walk on water. Teach us how to do that thing you do before you multiply the loaves and the fish and the bacon. No, I mean the loaves and the fish, okay? He would not, I, 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 I think Sister Schindler would let us know he would not multiply the bacon, okay? So praise the Lord. I, so, so, so he, teach us how to pray. Jesus said, verse, verse 2, this is how you pray. So if you're worried about the war in between Russia and Ukraine, this is how you pray. If you're worried about the war in the Holy Land, this is how you pray. If you're worried about the 2024 election. This is how you pray. And the beauty of the model prayer is you already know it. You already know it. Father, this is the Luke version of it. Matthew 6 is, of course, Matthew's version. Father, may your name be kept holy. Okay. Hallowed be thy name. 
May your kingdom come soon. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day the food we need. And it is not just talking about food. Matthew 4.4, 4, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it's basically saying, tell God about your daily needs and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived from, for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom. Now they, they lived in one room, not one bedroom, one room homes in those days. So. If you awaken someone at midnight, you awaken the entire family. And to try to give these, uh, your, whoever it was, your neighbor who desperately needed something, it, 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 was, it was a debacle, really. And a friend of mine has just arrived, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out, the door is locked, don't bother me. This is the, the man in the home. And my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you, but I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake. If you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of, I love this, your shameless persistence. Back in the day, they had a song, Ain't Too Proud to Beg. <laughs> Have you ever been shamelessly persistent in your crying out to God? Are you sufficiently concerned with what is going on in our world that you are shamelessly persistent? Jesus continues, and so I tell you, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. And, and this is amazing to me. In many of your Bibles, it's in red. It's Jesus speaking. He said, for everyone who keeps on asking will receive. What do you need from God? In your relationships, what do you need from God in your vocational responsibility? What do you need from God in your intellectual development? What do you need from God in your health and fitness? For everyone who keeps on asking receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So I want us just look at a few steps if we are going to use the force of more effective prayer. You have more power regarding what is going on in our nation and world than you realize. And, and I love the passage that, uh, that uh, Sister Shinley read today, if my people called by my name, so not everybody, just my folk, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith. So step number one, ask God to teach you how to pray. Have you ever asked God to teach you how to pray? I mean, that's what the disciples did. That only thing they ever ask him to teach him, teach him how to pray. And let me give you a quick way to do that. Ask God for wisdom. 
It's a promise, a Bible promise. James 1, 5. If anyone lack wisdom, let him or her do what? Ask of God. Who gives it liberally and won't resent the fact that you ask. I call it stupid proofing your life. I mean, life is difficult to navigate. The, 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 the multiple echo chambers that we hear, we don't know what to do. You, you stupid proof your life when you ask Dr. James 1 5, if anyone lack wisdom, let him or her ask me for it. God says, and I will give it to you liberally. Mm -hmm. Ask him for the wisdom to know how to pray. A second promise is in Luke eleven thirteen, which says, if you, and that that's, ends the paragraph that we read, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, and this is an AP question, how much more is your heavenly father eager to give his what? Wow, well done. His Holy Spirit to those who ask. The Holy Spirit intercedes. The Holy Spirit prays for you. I dare you to ask the Holy Spirit, who is yours by request, you know, Lord, Luke eleven thirteen, but whatever that preacher is talking about, you know, abracadabra, when I, just, I want some of it, okay? Romans eight twenty six says, the Spirit helps us in our infirmities, for we do not know how to pray or for what to pray, but the Spirit of God will pray for us with wordless groans. If you ask God for wisdom and his Holy Spirit, you will know how to pray. And remember, the Our Father is not to be prayed like a recitation. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. No, no, no. It is a template for prayer. I try to play chess, and when I was in the Navy, I was, I was one of the pop, I was the most popular chess player on an aircraft carrier, and I was popular because I always lost. <laughs> and so when a sailor would get depressed, they'd say, you know, dear John Letter from home, go play the chaplain in a game of chess, it'll make you feel much better. So I finally got tired of being, I, I, I'm not being hyperbolic, I always lost, okay? Oh, I don't care who it was, somebody just learned the moves, I always look. So we pulled in the road to Spain, and I went to a little store there, the PX on the base in Rota, and I said, do you have any kind of book on chess? And a book by I Horowitz, still have it, How to Think Ahead in the Chess Opening. I read it, I got back to the ship, and they were having a chess tournament as we went, we got underway. And when I put, I, was, I still remember, I was number 24, so this, this was a big chess tournament. Never, never won a game. When I put my name on the, to sign up for the chess, I could, as I walked away, laughter started going through the ship. They were, there were wagers being made. Oh, I, I, well, I know who's going to be the caboose in this thing. Okay, okay. One book, read in a city, gave me templates. If you're playing white, play the Dutch stone wall. You, if you just put the pieces in it, and it's the Dutch stone wall. If you're playing black, and white starts out with D4, you play the Sicilian dragon, uh, or rather E4, D4, you play the Alaska variation of the Queen Gambit decline, and at the end of the tournament, a week later, I don't know how to put this modestly. I was, I, I was in second place and when I had never won a game. The Our Father is your template. Work through that template. The master teacher has already given you what you need. Step two, make 
God's will the focus of your prayer. It's not about my will. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does that mean? It's in the Our Father. Thy kingdom come is the beginning of the couplet. And then the second part explaining what that couplet means. So what does thy kingdom come mean if you follow it with the, with, with the next phrase? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's will to be done. Do you want God's will to be done in what happens to America? Do you want God's will to be done in what happens to the nations of the world? The hymn we sing, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me, make me after your will while I am waiting, yielded and still. And this is going to shock you. We have a prayer breakfast with senators every week that the Senate convenes. I will have been chaplain of the Senate 22 years this next July. We've had prayer breakfast every week in that time. One senator has missed one prayer breakfast in 19 years. That's how can it, both sides of the aisle represented. 20, 25 lawmakers coming together for an hour. You have lawmakers who have begun to fast. Both sides of the aisle. They do the Wesley fast. Wesley, John Wesley, the father of the Methodist Church, would not ordain a minister who did not agree to fast twice a week. Uh, lawmakers and I have been fasting ever since Russian tanks headed for Ukraine. We started fasting and have continued to fast and do the Wesley fast. We have been fasting for the 2024 election. Republicans, Democrats, Independent, fasting for the 2024 election. And we have not been telling God whom to select to head our nation. We are so confident that it is the will of God that we should be seeking that we have scheduled as we have in subsequent, in, in previous elections, we schedule a prayer and thanksgiving, a, 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 a praise and thanksgiving service after each election, and it's wall to wall people at it. Okay? So you don't see that on the C SPAN cameras, okay? We we I also teach a Bible study. I've been teaching it for almost 22 years. We also have a senator who's only missed that once in the same one in 19 years, okay? These folk are serious about doing spiritual warfare, and we need you to so desire the will of God to be done that that is your passion. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And then, finally, pray <laughs> with shameless persistence. This old, you know, I'm sometimes up, I'm sometimes down. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm sometimes leveled to the ground. Oh, yes, Lord. Really? Is that bad? No, no, no. 
no, no. Instead, what our Lord told the disciples, he said, keep on asking. God is our light and our salvation. Newsflash, God's got this. There is no need to fear. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. As the philosopher Yogi Berra put it far more eloquently than I, it ain't over until it's over. Who oh, blessed that? <laughs> and when you do that, you can be a part of that group that Sister Shenlin was talking about, call my people. And, and, and you know, he's got folk who are not in your denomination. He's got folk, other sheep, John 10, I have, I have not, I will, who are not of this fold, them ones have he, he, He's got folk who know how to get through. He sent Elijah to a widow. He said, I have commanded a widow to feed you. He sent Elijah when the brook dried up to a woman who was of the same race and religion as Jezebel. And Jesus later said there were many widows in the time of Elijah the prophet, but he sent him to, he said, I've commanded her. She was hearing the voice of Yahweh, even though she did not call him by that name. I want to make a quick challenge to you. There are tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in our nation and world who are fasting at least once a week. And the Wesley fast is you don't eat anything until 3, 3 p.m. It's not as difficult as you think. It's okay. But they're doing that at least once a week, praying for three things, the war in Ukraine, the war in the Holy Land, and the 2024 and they are praying with one focus, let your will be done. God's ways are not our ways. You know? Daniel 1 verse 1 says, and, and God gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and had already forewarned her back up that it would happen in his lifetime. Habakkuk was the chaplain for Jehoiakim. We talking Nebuchadnezzar, who was certified. We talking heat the furnace seven times out of there. I mean, we, we, talking, we talking Brother Neb. Thy will be done. And if it had not been for that diaspora that ensued, we would know about Chadrach and Abednego, we would know that amazing prophecy in Daniel 2, you are the head of gold and after you will come, 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 come. And so I want to challenge you to make a commitment once a week not eat anything. You can drink, you can hydrate coffee, tea, water. I will not eat anything. Uh, I love it because I can tell the senators who are on the Wesley fast when they walk in, oh yeah, you on it, you on it. At the prayer breakfast, you on it, you on it, you on it at the Bible study. Okay, I'm, I'm an old evangelist, okay? So I'm old school. I want to pray for anyone who is sufficiently concerned about what is going on on planet Earth to say, I will push my plate back at least once a week in order to have access to the power of God. I will keep on asking. I will keep on seeking. I will keep on knocking. And I will thank God for whatever he does because I want his will to be done. Nevertheless, let your will be done. If you're willing to make that commitment, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to stand. Yep, I'm going to ask you to put your
is back from the table and stand. If you're willing to say, by the grace of God, through November 5, I will once a week not eat anything until 3. is finished. I'm ready to return to the hill and let them know we, we are right now. We, yeah, I, I was a little nervous there, but we're all right because in Middletown they don't just come for the eggs and bacon. In Middletown they come to do spiritual warfare. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the presence of your spirit in this place. Thank you that the people called by your name have decided it isn't over until you say it's over. And we are going to humble ourselves and seek your face. And with David, King David, greatest of the Jewish kings, we're saying, as he did in the 35th Psalm, verse 15, I afflicted myself through fasting. We're going to say, like Esther, when her people faced genocide, my maidens and I will fast and tell Mordecai to do the same, and I will go before the king, even though it is against the law, and if these dear ones say, we're fasting and praying that your will will be done. And Lord, you've said in James 4, 2, we have not because we ask not. And so I'm asking that for these dear committed ones who are courageous enough to say, yes, I make the commitment that you would also give them uncommon health. You've said in your word, I would above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. 3 John 2. And so Lord, they are demonstrating their spiritual fitness by engaging in fasting and prayer. Now let their physical health also match their spiritual health. For we pray this in your sovereign name. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. I brought a little book along with uh, Make Your Voice Heard in Heaven to teach your children and your grandchildren how to pray. It's called A Prayer for Our Country. And as the philosopher Forrest Gump said, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, God bless you. Thank you, Chaplain Black, for sharing his word, your word, and dropping a significant challenge on uh, us who are blessed to be here this morning. At this time, we, we will hear remarks from our host,
County Executive Steve Newhouse. Steve has been Orange County's executive since 2014. He's, the, he's in the third year of his third term, continuing his hard work for and dedication to the residents of Orange County. Steve also serves our country as commander in the Navy Reserves. He's the current president of the New York County Executives Association. Steve and his wife, Rachel, are the proud and very, very busy parents of four children oh, and their dog, Birdie. Please welcome our County Executive, Steve Newhouse. Wow. You know, uh, in the spirit of his job as being the chaplain for the Senate, I asked if I could yield more time to him. But uh, it's always tough following these incredible, incredible speakers every year. And I do feel the prayers of people saying, man, I would not want to be in issues. Um, but welcome. And it's so great to see such a strong crowd today. This is pretty much the only place and only time during the year where you could talk about prayer and politics. And it's okay. We, um, you know, it was mentioned from my friend Craig Brown, uh, th this happens because of Dot. And uh, she is retiring this year. And she's, she's kind of she's kind of the quarterback of this group. And you know, Mary Pat's on my chief of staff, so I know a lot of people like was Dot voted off the island. No. Um, she is actually planning to retire. Uh, from the court system in December, and, uh, and they want to enjoy life a little bit, but uh, they're not going to leave uh, their spirituality, and they're not going to stop working, but they might be geographically separated from us. So, but I said that no matter what, we would fly you back here, um, because I think you'd want to be part of this. So um, we appreciate you. Uh, we also appreciate Larry. This guy keeps the trains running on time, and you see him here. What a wonderful man. And uh, I thought he got, uh, you know, when we met Barry last night, he was like, call me Barry. I'm like, sir, you got two stars on your shoulder. Um, I'm calling you Admiral or Sir. Uh, but a wonderful, wonderful down to earth man. But the, the, both of them were wearing bow ties. And uh, I thought that you did that for Larry. And then I see the photos, half your photos you have one. So what a beautiful art. But Larry, thank you so much. And uh, I know you're gonna still be around here, so if we need to call you, you'll be here. I also wanna thank Pastor Jared. Pastor Jared is uh, like the football coach in the bridal suite with us before we go out there. Every year before we come out here, he says a prayer keeps everybody together and then pushes us off to our doing. So uh, Pastor Jared, thank you for being here. Um, and, the, the, the prayer committee, I, I'm involved in all sorts of different organizations and things you name under the rainbow. I don't know any group that meets as frequently and right away as this prayer breakfast committee. So if you are on the prayer breakfast committee, please stand up. Come on, Dot, stand up. The whole bunch of you, they're hiding in the back. Um, but they, I'm leaving the office oftentimes and I see them coming in. Uh, they actually have a therapy dog, right? Or that's what they tell the security in my building when they come in. Um, but it, it, is, uh, it is a beautiful thing. And uh, I know uh, one last group, I know the Pagonuses are here. Uh, you're, you guys are one of the ones that really grabbed me when I first got elected and said, you need to do this. So uh, it's great to see you both. I know you guys are so humble when you're sitting in, uh, but you stand up. So it's so great to see you both. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really brief. Uh, yesterday, as things were going, uh, you know, developing in the Middle East, I was getting uh, calls and texts from my sailors and Marines saying, is this our time or are we going to go? And I kept responding to them, you'll get your chance. Later on in the evening, we have such a wonderful private dinner before this just to make sure we have our heads together. Everybody up on a dais knows what their role is. And we got a chance to speak to uh, Admiral Black, Barry Black, Chaplain Black, Barry. And of course the question came up, like, well, what do you think is going on? And just what he said to you today, it's in the plan. It's all in God's plan. Chill, calm as a cucumber, it's all in the plan. 
We have a very difficult world. And I, by the way, if you saw the debate last night, I, I thought the debate was wonderful. They talked about God. They agreed with each other on some things. Okay, they did their political barbs. So that's what you get in a debate. But God forbid you mention that I'm praying for you. So they said he prayed about the other, his opponent. And they were cordial to each other. I think things are working. Simple fasting for three things between now and election day, not a big deal, not a heavy lift. And it was wonderful to see this room. The one thing I'll say is we started a leadership thing in the county this year. And we asked leaders, it's basically like a fireside chat, like what's a good advice, what's your favorite book? Every one of them has mentioned that they pray. Over the last couple of years and probably decades, and I'm getting up there in age, even though I look a little bit better, my hair's not going gray yet. We've seen a lot of eroding, and it's not cool to talk about praying. Not okay to talk about faith. I think it's on us to say it's okay to do that. There are people in this room that are doing awesome. There are people in this room that are doing okay. And there's people in this room that are not doing okay. And are looking for something. You're sitting next to people, some of you are sitting with your friends, some of you are sitting next to people you have no idea who they are. I hope when you leave here that you meet somebody that may change your life and walk out of here saying that it's okay to pray and it's okay to publicly say to people that you pray because if we want to make the difference in this world and it matters to you and you're not happy with some of the things that are going on, the only way to make that difference and make that change is to pray. So I am grateful here for you to be here. Last night, half the people around the table said they're thankful to me that I have the courage to pray. This is easy. This is an easy lift. And I mention this often uh, on the annual basis when I'm here. This is nothing for me to stand up here and do this. If I have to be afraid to pray, I got much bigger problems. That's what's so great about this country. So I am immortally patriotic, immortally proud to pray. I talked about it with my friend Danny Mulvey yesterday as I was walking out yesterday afternoon. It's okay. And it'll all be okay. Just have to keep your faith. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting this, no matter what your role is here today. And have a wonderful day. Thank you. So before we um, close in prayer, I want us to do a little activity because I can't help but be a teacher. And so I want you to take a second, two seconds, to think of a child in your life because I'd like to bring children into this room today to think about our future. Our future is our children and, you know, how special children are in God's, in God's kingdom. And so just think of a child that may need you for a minute. And I know that Chaplain Hill, Chaplain Black, sorry. Chaplain Black had given us a already challenge, but I, we are resilient and I feel the force in the room, so I'm going to give you another challenge and a commitment. I want you to think of that child all year and when you're back here next year at this breakfast, that you're able to share with someone in this breakfast the force that you shared with that child, the way you lifted up that child, the way you prayed for that child, that you be the one for that one child this year, and that you connect with someone else to maybe pray for two children and let that continue, whether it's someone in this room or someone outside for that room. So I pray that we remember that child so that when we come back together, we have multiple, multiple children, whether they're in this country or another country. So I ask that we can make that commitment to be the force in that child's life. So, as I look out in the audience, I, I couldn't stop thinking about redwood trees. And for anyone who doesn't know how redwood trees grow, usually a tree has roots that grow deep in the ground. But redwood trees, they grow out, and they grow long. 
And I can't but help to think that we are growing long and out that way. And so I'm going to ask before we close in prayer that you take your arm and you put your arm behind the chair next to you as we grow out. You can touch each other if you like. May we bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of hope lifting our community into your loving embrace. We ask for your wisdom as we navigate challenges together. May our prayers rise like a chorus, uniting us in strength and purpose. Help our leaders to be a source of support for one another, fostering kindness and understanding. As said in Thessalonians, therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just in fact as, we, as you are today. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. In times of uncertainty, remind us of the light that shines in our shared dreams and aspirations. Let our faith be a beacon of hope, inspiring us to take steps towards healing and growth. Father, grant us the courage to lift each other up, to listen with compassion, and to act with love. May our connections be made today deepen in our resolve, strength, as we work together to build a brighter future. Heavenly Father, trust us in your presence among us, believing that through continued prayer and collaborative commitment, our community can flourish. In a few minutes, we will end our day here, and as we take our next, next steps, we may, may we stay steadfast in prayer. I pray, Lord, that your will to manifest in our lives, to clear the distractions of earthly discourse, opening the door to new possibilities and path that align to only your purpose. And in Jesus' name I say, amen. of God with your lives. Welcome back next year. Amen? Amen. Amen.